Hi, my name is Angela. Today I'm going to talk to you about both the Ariel and the Pathfinder machines. Uh, both of these are embroidery machines. The Ariel is a sewing and embroidery machine where the Pathfinder is an embroidery only machine. So I'm going to go through all the features of them. Primarily I'm going to talk most of the sewing features with the Ariel and then I'll show you some of the embroidery features with this and then I'll step over to the Pathfinder to show you the extra features that the Pathfinder has um, when it comes to embroidery. Both of these machines come with a 5x7 hoop and then they also come with an 8x12 hoop to do your embroidering on. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll talk about all the features with these machines. So right now I've got the aerial machine set up to, to show you how to sew with this, but the next part I'm showing you is how to make a bobbin and how to thread and that's going to be common between both machines. So regardless of whether you're sewing or embroidering, you're always going to need to make a bobbin and you're going to need to be able to thread the machine. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to take this out of the way so you can still see me. So when you're making a bobbin, you need to start with a class 15 bobbin. We recommend using the plastic ones. So they look like this. And just, I'm going to go ahead and use finishing touch. This is what we recommend you using for a bobbin. On the aerial, you would use the 60 weight finishing touch. This is bobbin thread for when you're embroidering. Um, you can, it's the same process to do with any other thread, but I'm just going to go ahead and make us an embroidery bobbin. So you start by putting it on this back pin. You're going to hook it around the little loop and there's instructions on the top with dotted lines that show you how the path of the thread needs to take. And you're going to wrap it around this metal area here. And then the way I like to wind a bobbin is there's actually a little plastic hole in the bottom of this. Let me start with the blunt edge. I just like to feed the thread through the hole so I have it coming out the bottom. And then I like to pinch it right on the spool pin here. Now the one thing I want to really make sure you guys learn is that this has a lot of slack in it. The thread will get actually bound up underneath this area. Um, if that ever does happen to you, you can pull this off, take the thread off and pop this back on. But in order to prevent that, if you pull from the other side and make sure this is nice and straight and taut, you won't ever have that problem. So once you have your bobbin on there, you can take the little lever over and you'll see a screen pops up on your machine. And this shows you how fast or how slow it winds your bobbin. Um, typically I always do one notch down from the fastest. If you're winding a bobbin with any kind of specialty thread or metallic, you might want to slow it down a little bit because we don't want to stretch the thread. We just want to get it wound properly on here. And then just hit the start button in order to start winding and you'll see it'll wind the bobbin. And it auto detects when it's full and it'll stop for you. But it's just as simple as that. If you see for any reason if the thread seems to be catching on any of the little, um, a lot of times there's a little notch to do it. If you see it pulling on that, you can definitely put on a spool cap. But make sure it's a little bit over the size of what you're working with. So the neat thing with these machines is you'll see there's two spool pins. There's one for actually threading the machine and one for up here. While you're embroidering or while you're sewing, you can actually wind a bob and it's really neat. It's neat to be able to multitask. Now it actually won't fill up the bobbin all the way. It goes to about 90% and that's done by design. It actually will stitch better when it's not completely overfilled. As you can see it stopped on its own. You just need to trim it and pull it off. And there we have a bobbin ready for embroidery for later on here. Um, so we'll just take that off here and do that. The next step I'm going to show you is basically how to thread the machine. And again it's the exact same steps whether it's for sewing our embroidery, I'm going to use this spool pin. And again, like before, you've got the same steps on here that show you how to thread it. So we're going to go around this first little arm. We're going to go up and around. We're going to go down and up to three. You can kind of do an exaggerated loop on four. So you'll see in here that there's a take up lever. If you want to watch it, you want to make sure that it goes around that. We're going to go down to five. In here, there's a little hook, it's called number six, right above the needle. Okay, at this point, I kind of want to teach you something. Um, this is really important when it comes to the embroidery, but it's definitely important for sewing as well. But when you pull on this, it should be very free flowing. It should come out with no problem. When you put the presser foot down and you pull on it, you should feel there's a little tension on it. You can still pull the thread, but you can definitely feel something's holding on to that. 
So you need to make sure when you're threading this that the presser foot is up so it can get the thread can get into the, the tension disc up there. But it's a good way to tell whether or not you've actually gone around properly at step four. So once you ensure you got that, the other nice thing is with the presser foot down, it's actually holding your thread to make the next step easier. So there's a little channel in here between six and seven that you're gonna run the thread through. You're gonna go over the number seven and you're gonna go around and catch the little thread trimmer on the left hand side. And then this is the best button in the world. You push this and it'll thread it for you. How did we ever live without that? And that's how you thread the machine. Same steps, whether it's for sewing or for embroidery. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple of features with sewing. I'm not gonna go into huge detail with this because the fun with this machine is definitely with embroidery, but it is really nice to have sewing features on this and you can just flip back and forth. So on this machine, when you get to the main page, you'll see there's three options. There's sewing, embroidery, embroidery edit. So, because we wanna do sewing, we're just gonna hit sewing. If you happen to have the embroidery arm attached, you can still go into sewing mode. It'll just move the embroidery arm off to the side so you can, to get through it. I'm um, just gonna look through some of the basic settings in here. You can see all of the stitches that we have on the page. It's a really nice screen to be able to see all of it. You can use the up and down arrows to get between the pages. You'll see there's kind of sub tabs of different decorative stitches, all kinds of things out there. So explore around with what you have. There's also, right now we're looking at utility stitches. You can also click on decorative stitches and you can see there's a ton of stuff out there. Um, so my challenge to you is go out and find something fun that you'd like to do. Uh, la, 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 la. Let me just find, I'm just gonna do a basic zigzag stitch, but I wanna show you a couple things. Well, we'll start with a straight stitch. So if you look, we have 1-01, 1-02, and 1- well, all of the 1-01 through 04. So one and two are left justified. It's kind of hard to see that, but when you actually pick one of those, you'll see your needle moving to the left. And if I go back, it goes back to the center. So one and two are left justified and three and four are centered. So depending on where you want to stitch is that. You'll also see two minor little differences where it looks like two lines on three and just a dot on four, and that's the reinforcement stitch. So it's whether or not it does uh, a reverse stitch or whether it actually just does a locking stitch in place. So again, it's just how you want to have your, your project look when you're done. Uh, you can see similar things on the zigzag for the nine and 10 stitch. So I'm just gonna pick a zigzag. Over here on the left-hand side, you can see some settings about when it's done stitching, whether you want to leave the needle down. That's really nice when you're quilting that you stitch along the line and when you stop that it automatically leaves the needle down. That makes it nice for you to pivot. It also has settings to where you can auto reinforce. So when you start stitching, it'll automatically do the back stitches for you. And then there's also an auto trim feature that when you do the reinforcement stitch at the end of a, of a line of stitches that it can automatically cut for you too. Um, with the zigzag, you can see at the bottom, you've got lots of different options on what you can choose. Um, the width is how wide the zigzag is. The length is going to be more easily explained with a straight stitch. It's going to be how long the stitches are, whether you want them really close together or whether you want really large stitches. The width makes more sense with a, a zigzag, but you have the same width and length on that as well. Um, so you can do that there. So I'll just kind of show you some basic ones. And I just have a really simple quilt sandwich here, just two pieces of fabric with some batting in the middle. Just a quick button to raise and lower the presser foot. And then as you can see right now, it's doing the reinforcement stitch. And then now it's gonna go to zigzag. As you can see, it's running super slow right now. And that's because this indicator at the top is a speed control. So it's super slow here, but if you want to go faster, you can dial it up and it goes much faster. So you can kind of use it as you want to. Go ahead and trim this. And I want to insert a pause in here because something is not right. All right, let's try it again. Does it kind of look like it picked up later? I did not test stitch this machine before coming in. Actually, this is a good thing to stop and kind of talk about while we're here. 
So I want to show you how to properly load a bobbin because what was happening on this, you can see, you don't see any of the purple thread. All you saw was the bobbin thread coming up. So what's happening is that the bobbin tension wasn't correct. So once you wind the bobbin, when you take it off, you'll see that when you have the, the string hanging down, it's hanging counterclockwise and it'll actually match the picture at the bottom here in the bobbin case. So when you lay this in, you will take the thread and you'll kind of follow the little groove. And what I want you to do is pull on the thread a little bit so you can see the bobbin spinning before you cut it off. And that ensures that it locks into the tension disc on the bobbin as well. So now when we try this, it should be a much better stitch. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Here just to kind of show you and you can see that stitch turned out much 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 better so again that's all right but that's why we test these things out um, so in this case it's probably hard to see but it actually locked that front that top stitch with just um, it just stitches in place and so that does a good job on the bottom I didn't reinforce it and you can see that it's kind of pulling out so I'm going to show you real quick again we're going to start it it does the auto reinforce stitch and then when we get to the end, you can choose to either do the reverse stitch or the reinforced stitch to stop it. So I'm just gonna do the reinforced stitch to stop it. And because we have it selected here, it'll auto cut for us, which is really nice when you're sewing. So again, we have different options here. You can play with it. We'll change the width a little bit, make it bigger. Uh, the other option you have is I'm using the foot control too. If you'd like, you can use just the start and stop button, but when you do that, it'll tell you to make sure remove the foot controller. So you just unplug that, and then you can just use this to control it without the foot pedal, which is kind of nice too if you forget to take it with you when you go somewhere. And you just hit the stop to do it. So in this case, I've changed the width of it, and then um, on the screen, you'll see that the width doesn't have a black box around it. So it's not the default setting. If you want to go back to the default setting, you just go back to where it highlights with the black box. Um, so again, length, I'll bump it up just to kind of show you some different examples. We'll start that up again. And again, you have the speed control, which is much more important when you're not using the foot control. Again, we'll just finish this up. And here, this is where I made the width wider on it and I made the stitch length longer on it. So you can play with all the different decorative stitches. It, if it's something it won't let you change the width or the length, it'll disable it from you. It's a very smart machine. It doesn't let you, doesn't let you do things it doesn't want you to do. Uh, there's a couple other features you have here. Um, this one that looks like a flying staple is what I jokingly call it, is called the free motion. And when you hit that button, what it does is it lowers the feed dogs on your machine so you can actually stitch free motion on here. I don't have the right foot on it, but that's something you can do. Um, what I'll also have you notice is when you're picking different stitches on here, it'll actually show you which foot it suggests you put on. Your machine comes with all kinds of feet. Um, definitely check your guide as to which ones those are. Let us know if you have any questions about them. We're not gonna go into all the details, but you can see for the free motion, it recommends a, an open toe free motion foot. Um, just a standard J foot for, you know, zigzag or straight stitches. If you start getting into the decorative stitches, it'll tell you to use the end foot or the monogramming foot. Um, it'll tell you all the different things with that there. If I go back to utility stitches, um, the other option you have in here too is you have it where you can mirror it. So remember I said one and two are left justified. If you pick that, you can see the needle goes to the left. If you hit the mirror, you'll actually watch the needle goes all the way to the right. So now those are right justified stitches. So there's some stitches if you want to mirror it. Um, like this here, this overcasting stitch has the straight line. It has kind of the zigzag on the right. If you mirror it, well, I guess it won't let you mirror it. But I mean, there are cases where you can mirror um, what you have here. The other option that you have too is whether or not you're using a single needle or a dual needle here and you could just run either one thread or two threads through the top and then you load it into either needle and it can kind of simulate um, a stitch like that that makes it look like um what's the term anyways so you can do um, double deep stitching there so 
that's pretty much the basics of sewing. I mean, there's obviously more to it, but um, I'm excited to get you into the embroidery portion of it because that's where we have a lot of fun with this machine. And that's where I like playing with machines. All right, so now we're to the fun part. I love embroidery and you guys, I hope you love it too. So the first thing we have to do is, especially on the area, I have to show you how to switch between sewing and embroidery. With the Pathfinder, this isn't something you really have to mess with, but anyways, we'll show you. So the first thing I want to teach you how to do is when you switch from sewing to embroidery, we wanna make sure we turn the machine off. So we're gonna do that so that we can replace, we're gonna take the accessory box off the accessory box just pulls straight off. And then you're gonna put the embroidery unit on. And you wanna make sure it slides on until it clicks and it's on there. And then we're gonna turn the machine back on. And after you touch the home screen, uh, you'll get a thing, a message saying that it wants to uh, initialize the embroidery carriage here. So when you hit that button, you just wanna make sure everything's out of the way. And so now everything's initialized with it. So the first step was to put the embroidery arm. The next step, you wanna make sure you remove the sewing foot and put your embroidery foot on. So on the Pathfinder, the embroidery foot actually has a little cord and it plugs into the back. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but once we get the embroidery foot on, we have that. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna change the needle from a sewing needle to embroidery needle. The, embroid the eye of embroidery needle is a little bit bigger and it helps for the speed of all the stitching we're doing. So you'll notice when you're embroidering that there's a lot more thread that's used and it goes a lot faster. The last thing you wanna do is you wanna change your thread. So typically you're not gonna use regular thread in the bobbin when you're embroidering. There are some exceptions to that. Um, you want it, we recommend using finishing touch. And if you remember earlier, we wound us a special bobbin of finishing touch. Now for the aerial, you wanna make sure you use 60 weight finishing touch. And again, your machine should have come with the spool of this. This is what we definitely recommend. For the Pathfinder, you're gonna use 90 weight. So if you can see this kind of teal color bobbin, thread. Um, this is for the Pathfinder only. The white is for the aerial. Okay. Um, before we go into here, I kind of want to explain something for, to you as well, because this might be a little confusing. There's a little um, gray cover on here that we're just going to pop off real quick, and your machine will tell you that it'll give you errors with it. But if you grab out this bobbin case, I want to talk to you guys about bobbin cases. We're having a lot of issues recently with customers on this, so I kind of want to walk through it with you. So your machine typically will come with three bobbin cases, right? So the first one I'll show you because it's very different is a gray one. And this is for bobbin work. And I'll kind of talk about that in a bit. But this one basically has no tension on it. It's for when you put decorative thread in the bobbin, not on the top. So we're not really gonna mess with that one right now. But then you have two bobbins, bobbin cases here. So one has a purple dot in the middle. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see, one doesn't. Um, but what I like to look for is on the side, there's a screw. There's a screw that has like green paint on it. So the one with the green paint is the one that is specifically calibrated to work with finishing touch thread. So when you're embroidering and you have finishing touch thread, you're gonna use this one. If you flip back to sewing, you're gonna wanna put the other bobbin case in there. Or if you're using any other bobbin thread other than finishing touch, you'll use the one with the purple dot in there purple dot, blue dot, depending on what color you see with that. So I just wanted to let you know, this is a common confusion part. To let you know. So since we're using finishing touch thread and we're embroidering, I'm gonna use the one that's got the green paint on the screw. Now, the green paint is there because we've, the tension has been set on this calibrated for finishing touch. So please don't adjust that one. If you change that, it'll need to come back to the shop to us to, to set it to the proper tension. So in order to get that back in, you just kind of tip the back in first. And you kind of line it up in there. There is a white triangle and white circle that'll line up. And you'll actually see when you wiggle it, it doesn't have much wiggle in it when you get it in there. It takes a little while to get used to it, but it's not too bad. Then we're going to replace the cover. And we're going to load the bobbin the way we did before. So again, match the picture to what you have. I have the thread coming off the left-hand side. 
And you're gonna drop it in there, run the thread through the channel, pull on it a little bit, and then trim it off. And now you've done everything you need to do to transfer it over to embroidery mode. So the next step you have is to actually hoop your stabilizer. Oh, I forgot, there is actually one step. See this thing here? You don't need it for embroidery, so you can just take it, and put it off to the side. That actually scares some people that you don't actually need the foot pedal to embroider, but that's all right. Okay, so this is your hoop, and I have a sample piece of fabric and some stabilizer. So this one happens to be cutaway stabilizer. So cutaway, like it says, when you're done with the project, you're gonna cut it away from the back. So if you've ever seen an embroidered shirt and you can kind of see the, the stabilizer left over in the back, that's what it, what it is. Um, so there's three main kinds of stabilizer that I wanna talk about. So there's cutaway, there's tear away, which when you're done with the project, it'll tear away and it'll still leave some of the stabilizer behind the stitches. And then there's wash away. Wash away when you're done, you wash the garment or wash the towel or apron or whatever you're stitching on and all of the stabilizer disappears from under the stitches too. So when do you use cut away? When do you use tear away? When do you use wash away? It really depends. And I, I hate that answer, <laughs> but it is true, it is true. So, and even within each one, like this is cut away, but you can see this is actually a pretty heavy cutaway. Um, it's not flimsy, it's got some stability to it. Um, there's different weights. If you don't want to feel the stabilizer in your project, you would do a lighter stabilizer. If you don't mind it being stiff a little bit, you can use a heavier stabilizer. Um, so that's just based on feel. Um, the other thing is based on what you're stitching. So in this case, if you have a light script kind of text that you're doing, it doesn't need as much stability. Um, it's kind of hard to show this here itself, but um, if it's a denser stitch, um, you'll see that it's kind of puckered a little bit because maybe this wasn't a thick enough stabilizer. So when you watch for things like that, you may need to add extra stabilizer when it's a really dense stitch. Um, whereas if it's a thinner stitch, more like script, it doesn't need quite as much stabilizer behind it. So those are some things to kind of help you with that. Um, the other thing to consider, like I said, would be the kind of projects that you're working on. Um, so this pillow, for example, um, it's a pillow, and so you're not even seeing the inside of the project, so it really doesn't matter what kind of stabilizer you use. If you leave cut away on here, you really don't see it. Um, it just depends how stiff you may want the pillow. Um, if it's just decorative, it doesn't really matter. Just use what you have. Um, these projects here are like little gift pockets and so when we stitched those these used a tearaway stabilizer because we didn't want to see the stabilizer we didn't want to have to get in there and cut um, some of it's still left behind in the front part but on the sides it was really easy just to pop it out so in that case we used a tearaway and then you also have the ability to do freestanding lace so if you can see this i think through the light um, this was stitched on wash away stabilizer and when we were done we just run it through the sink and we wash it off and when it's done, all that's left is thread. And so it's pretty cool how that works. So that's the different kinds of stabilizer. And if you have more questions, please don't hesitate to, to contact us, we'll help you out. All right, so here's a standard hoop. Um, again, I mentioned that this one comes with two hoops in it. Um, it does support multiple size hoops. Um, the important part is just to make sure it's got the sliding capability. Um, when we go into the settings, I can kind of show you real quick. To the embroidery page in here at the top it'll show you all the different um, hoops that it, it supports there's all the ones that are in here you can kind of click between them but I won't go in, into detail with that but they're all several size huge hoops um, you just can't do anything larger than an 8 by 12 um, the hoop itself comes apart in two pieces um, so sometimes you need to pop it out or you'll need to unscrew the screw to pop it out um, pay close attention, there's two arrows that show you which, which way it goes together. And so when you separate it, this is the bottom portion and this is the top. So what you'll do is you'll lay the hoop down on a flat surface, you'll lay your stabilizer down, you'll lay your fabric down, kind of smooth it out. And then you'll just pop your top in. If it doesn't fit in, you just loosen it up a little bit. adjust it as you need to and then you're gonna tighten up the screw on the side um, so 
If you've got the grip strength, you can tighten it on the side like this, or it also does have a flathead screwdriver area, and you can use some of your tools that come with your machine to help you tighten it up. You wanna make sure it's in nice and tight and smooth. Make sure it's not like um, separated on one side. You wanna make sure it's there all together. And when it's done, it kinda of will make kind of a drumming noise like that, so you know that you've got it tight enough. Uh, depending on the material you're using on the top, you may not wanna tighten it too much. Um, if you have like a nice shirt or something like that and you really tighten this down, you can actually cause hoop burn on your fabric. So um, you want it tight, but don't make it so tight you ruin the project that you have. So that's all there is to load your hoop with stabilizer and fabric. All right, so now you have the basics done. We know how to thread the machine. We know how to hoop the stabilizer. Now it's time to actually pick the designs we want to work on. So on the main screen of either the Aerial or the Pathfinder, you'll notice there's two embroidery options. There's embroidery and there's embroidery edit. I know this can get a little bit confusing. If you're gonna go in and embroider just one file, just go in and you don't wanna do any kind of editing with it, you just go straight into embroidery. If you wanna add multiple designs to your embroidery or if you wanna do yeah, any kind of like editing type of thing, you're gonna go into embroidery edit. So as you get more experience with this, you're almost always gonna go into embroidery edit, but I'll just show you the basics of going into embroidery. Uh, the other thing to note is if you wanna do any of the bobbin work, that's only accessible from the embroidery menu. And you'll see down here, this one that has kind of like the scroll design and it has the B, that's for the bobbin work. And so if you recall with the bobbin work, that will use the gray bobbin case and you'll load your decorative thread in the bottom and there's just a regular thread on the top and it's you can see it's just kind of some it, it's kind of designed to look like hand stitching um, but it's it's worth trying to take a look at it we won't go over that in this video but just to know it's there so if you want to do bobbin work you need to do it from the embroidery menu so once you go into the embroidery menu, you'll see that there's lots of different options we have. Like it says the bobbin work. There's some exclusive designs that are out there. Um, so you can see out here, when you pick on a design, it'll load over here. So we have a real pretty tiger. Um, this looks like a parrot. And when this loads, you can actually see lots of information from this screen as it is. It shows you it's got multiple different color stops. Um, it shows you, you know, it uses an orange, a red, a green. It shows that it will support these two size hoops. It'll tell you that the design is roughly a five by seven design when you look at it. If I'm gonna stop real quick at this. If you see that this is in millimeters and you don't understand millimeters, if you go to your settings page and you go to page 10, you'll see at the top you can switch it between millimeters and inches. So if yours shows millimeters, flip it to inches so that you can understand what this is. So it can show you that it's 4.5 inches by 6.8. So this is really nice to pick designs going to know whether it's gonna fit on what you're stitching out. Once you find a design you like, you're gonna hit embroidery. And as you can see from here, you can do some basic sizing and rotating, but you can't add any extra designs to this. So if you wanted to add text or anything like that. So that's the limitations of being in just the embroidery, the embroidery window itself. Um, I'm gonna show you some features with this um, without actually stitching this one out. We'll do one a little bit simpler, but up at the top, it's gonna show you some things. It's gonna show you that this parrot is 15,856 stitches. So as you're stitching, it'll actually tell you where you are within that that stitch out. It'll also tell you it's going to take approximately 29 minutes to stitch this out. Now that's actual stitch time. That's not the time it takes to change the thread or if a thread break happens and you're not around and you walk away for 15 minutes, that's not counting anything like that. Um, the last thing is a fraction that we like to, to watch and that actually says which color stop we're on. So we're at zero, which means we haven't started. But once we go through this, you'll actually, you'll see it advance through here. So you'll know how far along you are in the color stops. Also on the right hand side, it'll actually show you a couple different things. It shows you kind of a little color sample. And again, that's just a recommendation. If you want to make a pink and purple parrot, make a pink and purple parrot. Um, load whatever color you want in here. Um, it gives you suggestions of you know what thread, thread brand it is or what thread color. You don't have to use those. Use what's in your stash. It'll also tell you each step approximately how minutes it takes to stitch that out. Um, so I'm going to go back. The easiest way to clear what you have and just kind of go back to the beginning is to hit the home button. And then we're going to go back into embroidery. So those were some of the exclusive designs. 
under the floral one you'll see we have some other designs out there there's an Easter Bunny there's some roses all kinds of things out there that you can do lots of different options lots of different pages you can pick between explore your machine see what you have available we also have monogramming letters that are out there pick B for baby lock so this has lots of different floral aspects of it again you can scroll down to get to all the different alphabet that's out there um, there's larger letters or smaller letters um, so these larger ones look like they're about five and a half inches tall these smaller ones are only about two inches tall we also have some built-in fonts that are in here that you can uh, there's also the exclusive baby lock script that's in here as well kind of the cursive baby lock so we go in here and we can say ABC so you can enter any kind of text that you want and stitch it out that way um, as you can see once I add that I can't add anything into that at this point so I'm gonna go back to the home screen and we're gonna go start playing with the embroidery edit so in the embroidery edit it looks the exact same that we saw so I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna pick a design all right and then like like you just noticed here I mean I can touch it and I can kind of move this around and right now it's kind of I don't have a hoop loaded but it's trying to to counter that for me so then do, 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 do. so now once I have that selected I can do add and I can add something else so we can go in here and I can hit ABC not terribly unique but it still gets the point across so let's say I want the text uh, to be rotated so I can rotate it by 90 degrees um, we can go into here you can change some of the default colors with it if you want you can kind of curve it if you want the letters you can play around with this any way you want um, if you want to select between these two so if like I want to change some of this kind of rose quilting in here you just hit the arrows back and forth and you'll see what's highlighted in red is what object you have selected in order to change things you have the option to size things up and down so there's proportional sizing so the two options on the left are proportional sizing so that's where you take like this rectangle here and you make it bigger on both the vertical and horizontal axis if you just want to stretch it one way or another you can use these other buttons here and you can see it's either the arrows going in or the arrows going out on each of the axis so there's lots of different options you can do to play with this as you add features in if you pay attention to these frames that are down here so with what I've added in here so far it'll only support the larger frame um, the 5 by 7 won't work because this overall is nine and a quarter by almost six so this isn't the appropriate one for us to be stitching out with but I just want to show you that you can just keep adding things if you decide you didn't want a portion of this you can just select it and hit delete and then you can add another design from that point on um, so we've talked about some of the designs we have in here some of the lettering we have we also have some simple shapes that we can add let's try to find a fun one so we'll go ahead and set that one so it's kind of a circle you can use it to frame things so in this case we want to size it a little bit larger let's take our text and we'll edit that a little bit size this down so I mean you can do all kinds of stuff in here just play around with it um, one thing to note when it's arced like that um, the line that it's showing you is just for the shape of it it won't actually stitch out that line so you'll see what it's going to stitch out over here on the right hand side so once you have everything set to where you want you would go ahead and hit the embroidery button and it's going to give you kind of a preview so we have two different things on here um, we've got the lettering and we've got the border and what I want to show you right now I have them both set for the same color but it doesn't matter it really is just what color you put into the into the machine so in order to load your hoop the first thing you're going to need to do is lift the little lever on your embroidery arm and this is where this is going to slide into you need to make sure you get it under the foot and slide it into the channel and once it's all the way in then you're going to lock it down and make sure any excess fabric is out of the way then what you need to do is put your press your foot down and as soon as you do that you'll see the light turns green and you're just going to go ahead and hit start 
And so now it's going to go through and it's going to stitch the lettering. It's pretty fun watching it. So as it does a trim, you'll actually see the arm of the foot will actually move the thread out of the way in order to stitch the next one. And it's really nice that it'll actually trim the stitches for you so you don't have to go back and, and clean up any of those jump stitches. If you're doing a particularly small font, you still may have some jump stitches you'll need to trim, but for the most part it does all of that for you. If at any point something doesn't seem right, you always can hit the start stop button and it'll stop doing what it's doing. Um, so in this case, I noticed that the foot actually got a little bit loose, so I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit more. Um, and it's right before it starts the seat. So just because this was one color stop doesn't mean you can't stop and change the color if you wanted to. So the proper way to change the color of what you have is you, you trim the thread at the top because you don't want to um, pull the thread the opposite way. You'll need to lift the presser foot up so it releases the tension on the thread and you can just pinch the needle and pull the thread out. Super, super easy. And then you can just switch to a different color thread. And you thread it the same way you would and you'll get really good at this, I promise. And once it's changed, you can just go ahead and start, start it up again. If at any time you actually need to stop stitching, let's say you maybe need to leave to go pick up the kids, but you're, you don't want to leave the machine on or anything like that, one of the cool features of this machine is it will keep what design you have loaded and it'll keep the place that you have going on. So let's say that you need to leave to go take care of something. Um, the first thing I definitely want to make sure that you do is you stop and make sure you trim any thread you have. So in this case, it finished the letter C, so it's, it's trimmed it. Because um, when you turn the machine back on, it's going to want to make you take off the hoop and reload it um, but this applies to like if you have a power outage or anything like that so let's pretend power turned off because again we didn't save our design or anything um, as a as a file on the machine so we'll just turn it back on and click on the welcome screen it'll tell us to remove the embroidery thing again it's really smart it's gonna calibrate the the arm again And then it's going to ask us, do you want to recall the previous memory? So we're like, absolutely, pull up our last design. So you can see it has it on there and it told us that it knows that we were done stitching the letters and we're ready to do the frame around the outside. So you can just load it back up, put the foot down and start her back up. So especially when you're working on a really, really large design, you don't have to sit down for the entire time to finish it. So the next thing I'm going to kind of try to simulate is if a thread break happens. So there's plenty of things that can go wrong. Um, if your thread gets caught around your spool cap or if you run out of bobbin thread, there's plenty of cases when you're stitching and just something doesn't happen right. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stop it here. I'm just going to go ahead and trim. Um, whether you have a thread break on the top or you run out of bobbin thread on the bottom, it's always a good idea to go ahead and do the trim function because just because it broke the thread on the top, you still have the thread attached on the bottom. If you run out of the bottom, you still have thread attached to the top. So just go ahead and get it nice and cleaned up. Down here on the bottom, there's a button that's got a needle and a plus and minus. And what this allows you to do is to jump forward and backward in your stitch count. So we can back it up 10 stitches. Um, on the screen, if you look, there's a green crosshairs and it actually shows you where in the design it's at. So you can use that to kind of gauge where you are in the design and go back and forth based on that. The other option you have too is over here, there's little spools of thread. You can actually go forward and back color stops. So let's say for example, maybe when you're stitching this out, you don't want to do the border, you don't want to do a certain letter, you can um, skip forward huge color stops if you want here. So there's lots of different flexibility. So in this case, I jumped ahead, but I kind of want to sneak back over here to when it was where we stopped it. And if there's some overlap, most of the time it doesn't cause any issues at all. Um, we're somewhere that's too far. I'm going to say we're about there. 
Um, you can also, if you decided you forgot to change the thread and you want to start it over, you can also stitch over top an existing one. Um, I just want you to be aware of like when you're painting a room that had red walls, it's really hard to paint over it with like white paint. Same thing applies to thread. If you've accidentally left red or black on there, it's going to be very hard to cover it up with white. But if you have similar colors, like maybe I didn't want this cream color, I wanted more of a pink, you can kind of stitch over top of it. It's not typically a problem. But that's how you go, and then you just, that's how you go forward and back, and you just lower the presser foot and start again. When the design's done, it'll tell you it's finished sewing. Then you can pull it out and you can see it's completed. Now over here, I actually stitched over top of it a little bit when I went back, but you can't even tell that it was like that. Um, so that's what it looks like when it's stitched out. Uh, a lot of times you check the back and take a look and see if the, I'll use this other one as a better example just because of the thread difference here. But to actually check that it's got really good tension, you should see both the, the front thread and the back thread on the back of this. Um, when you're actually sewing, you want to have your top thread and your back thread not show through either side. But when you're embroidering, you want to have the top thread actually showing through on the back along with your bobbin thread. So it should look like that in there. So that's something you can always do when you take the project off. You can check for that. Um, let's see what else. Um, there is a way to use this. I'm going to load one more design because I want to show you how to use some of the alignment tools that are on here. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to hit the home button to go all the way back to the beginning. We're just going to choose embroidery. Um, we'll pick one of these little letters. And hit embroidery. So let's say I want to try to test this up here in the corner. Um, you can kind of eyeball it a little bit. Be like, okay, maybe I want to be up here. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm not overlapping this here. So down here, there is what I call the trace button. It's a square with an arrow around it. And when you click on that, you can actually go to all the different points. So this is a C, but if you can visualize a square around it. So if I want to go to the upper left hand corner where that is, so you can see the green crosshairs here, that's where it's going to stitch. And down here, you can see here it's almost overlapping that line there. You can also use this button down here and it'll actually do kind of a virtual trace. You can actually see, is that going to be far enough away from where I need it? If it's not, you can close it and just kind of adjust it and tweak it from there. So that's a neat tool to be able to use for centering as well. And when we go to the Pathfinder, I'll show you another step that takes that just a, a little bit beyond. I've switched over to the Pathfinder machine, so I'm going to show you kind of the, the differences with the Pathfinder that we have here. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is that the embroidery foot is very different. So on the aerial, it's just kind of the metal portion here. On the Pathfinder, you actually have it with the laser pointer and it's also got a plug that goes in. So you attach it the same way you would the aerial and tighten it here. And then there's a plug on the back that you'll plug this into. If it's not plugged in the back, the laser pointer won't work. Right, so I got that plugged in there. We'll show you how that works in just a minute. Um, aside from that, you'll see that it actually looks quite a bit different. There's a whole bunch of the slider bar isn't there. There's the buttons that are missing. And if you actually look down here, it looks really strange because you don't see the feed dogs because this is just an embroidery machine. Uh, so you don't have any of the sewing features on it. And the screen, you'll see that we don't have the sewing here as well. We just have embroidery and embroidery edit. So again, it's the exact same steps as I showed you on the other one. The embroidery is just for embroidering one file, or if you want to do in, uh, bobbin work, if you want to add multiple designs on the page, you need to use the embroidery edit. So we'll just go ahead. I'll just do embroidery. Again, all the same screens. Um, you might have some different designs that are out here. Um, that you would have different from the aerial, but again, it's the same process in order to do everything. Um, I do want to show you what that laser pointer does. So we'll just kind of pick this one is kind of fun, this little chef. So we'll add him on. 
we'll load our hoop. And let's say I didn't have this lettering in the middle and you wanted to center him in there, but you wanted to see where he would fit. So remember I had the, um, if you do the, the square with the arrow around it, this has the kind of the tracing feature where it's gonna stitch out. Um, if before I do that, I go in here on the main screen, you see there's a picture of the foot and it's got a little red light in it. If you push that, you will see a little red laser light shows up on, on the fabric. So when we go in here to kind of do the tracing function and we hit that, you can actually see where it's gonna stitch out. It's a little bit easier than just trying to guess where it's gonna stitch out. So if you're wanting to kind of line something up real perfectly, it's really nice to use that little laser light. It comes in really, really, really handy. So that's the feature there. And then the other thing that's really fun on the Pathfinder is you actually have this sensor pin. So the sensor pin can be used to say you wanna stitch something. So let's say we wanna do text. So we wanna delete this one. And you can also use this as a stylus too. It's actually pretty nice. So we're gonna go enter some text. <laughs> I'm gonna do some tiny text. So this says hello, it looks like it. There it goes. If you hit the check button, it'll actually show you in larger um, text because if you're like me, I can't read that right there, but I can read that it says hello here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit embroidery. And then remember I showed you we had the, so we can line up with the laser light or if you wanna use the sensor pin. So it asks to, it wants to revert the angle. So it wants to start out in a regular position. But I'm trying to think if I have, let me use a sharpie real quick. So I'm going to draw kind of an imaginary line here. So I'm going to say I want it to stitch on that line. So the first thing it's asking us to do is it's asking us of the word hello, which part of this do I want to line up? So I kind of want to line up the bottom, the bottom left, because I want to line it up to where it stitches on top of that line. So I'm going to go ahead and OK. And it's telling us to pick two positions to kind of define that line of where we want to do it. So I'm going to do button one and you'll see it turned red and then I'm going to hit the second position on the other end of it and it turns red. And if you want to test to make sure what you selected is correct, you hit the, the light button and it'll move the embroidery hoop and it starts there and then we hit OK and it goes to where it finishes up. So it wasn't quite right. So let's go back and try this again. And I think it was just because it was off a little bit. We want to do the bottom. The two points. And so as you can see on the screen, it's actually rotated it towards that. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the foot down and we're going to try stitching it out for us here. But this is a nice way to do placement without having to actually do all the fine tuning and figuring out the angles. You just kind of tell it where you want it to stitch. And boy, is that some little text that it's got there. So as you can see, it stitched it on that line, just the placement of what was on there. So it's pretty neat tool to be able to use for positioning. So if you don't hoop your project properly straight, you can use those tools to use the sensor pin to actually tell us exactly where you want it to stitch out. It's a really, really cool feature. Um, so while there are lots of built-in designs onto the machine, you can also load designs from a USB stick. So on the side, you'll see that there's a USB port that you plug your USB into. Um, there's also a port to be able to hook it up to your computer, but I definitely recommend using the USB. It's definitely a better way to work with this. Um, once you do that, once you plug in the USB drive, you'll see there's a USB button on here. Once you select that, it'll actually show you all the designs that are on here. Right now I only have one design on this USB, but if you have multiple folders, you can traverse through the folders and select the one you want. 
just like any other design, it shows you a preview, shows you approximately the size of it, uh, what thread colors there are. If it's something you actually want to stitch out, you would just hit embroider it and it loads it just like it would on the machine. You could do any kind of sizing and rotations you need. If you want to save it to the machine, you would click the memory button and then you can decide whether you want to save this to a U another USB or if you want to save it to the machine itself. Go ahead and save it to the machine. I'm going to go ahead and hit the home to clear out the de current loaded design. If we go back to embroidery. So again, where we have the USB, you can also load any save files from the machine. And so right now we have that as a save file on the machine. So there's lots of different options on how to get to the, your embroidery files. You can load it from a USB, you can use the built-in ones or anything that's saved on your machine. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the Arial and the Pathfinder. Um, there's an infinite number of things you can do with it. Lots of projects that you have stop by Meyer Sewing and we've got lots of designs and things to stitch out. We have classes that teach you how to make projects in the hoop. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We're with you every stitch of the way.